Hello everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. The topic I am discussing today is macrocytosis. After having completed uh, two important topics in uh, hematology, that is microcytic hypochromic anemia and uh, normocytic normochromic anemia, now let's discuss macrocytosis. We will look into what are the causes of macrocytosis, what is what is the mechanism for macrocytosis. And then we look into the morphological features and finally as to how to approach a case of macrocytosis, right? So this is what we had uh, seen in the earlier uh, tutorials, right? So based on the size of the nucleus of small lymphocyte, we compare the uh, RBC size and then categorize into microcytic, normocytic and macrocytic. Macrocytic meaning, you know, you have MCV more than 100 femtoliters, right? And that's how we categorize anemia as also morphological classification into normocytic normochromic anemia, microcytic hypochromic anemia and then macrocytic anemia or macrocytosis. So this is what we'll be discussing in today's uh, session. So what is macrocytosis? By definition, it is a condition in which erythrocytes are larger than normal and manifest as increase in mean corpuscular volume more than 100 femtoliters, right? So this is a very simple definition of macrocytosis. All you have to uh, know is MCV value more than 100 femtoliters and then the RBC size more than normal. What do you compare with? Compare with the nucleus of small lymphocyte, right? Okay. Now, let's look into the causes of macrocytosis. So, basically, you know, we can categorize into two broad categories. One, uh, which is megaloblastic macrocytosis and two is non-megaloblastic. Now, what is the difference between uh, these two entities? Basically, you know, in megaloblastic macrocytosis, there will be impairment of DNA synthesis, whereas in non-megaloblastic macrocytosis, there is no such impairment, right? No impairment of DNA synthesis. Now, by and large, megaloblastic macrocytosis could be due to folate deficiency or cobalamin deficiency, for example. And the causes for these two can be either decreased intake of this, uh, you know, uh, these vitamins could be because of impaired absorption due to various causes, could be because of increased demand in the body and uh, deficiency can be because of certain drugs and can be due to inborn errors of metabolism of these two vitamins. Okay. So, these are the most common causes of folate or cobalamin deficiency. Second important uh, entity where megaloblastic macrocytosis can be seen is something called acute megaloblastic anemia. Now, what is this? In scenarios like nitrous oxide exposure or severe illness with extensive transfusion or even di dialysis, there can be acute deficiency of folate or cobalamin. That's when, you, that's when these patients manifest with acute megaloblastic anemia. So, the megaloblastic anemia develops within days or even few weeks. Right? So, that's acute megaloblastic anemia. And third category is you do find megaloblastic type of macrocytosis when, when there is no explanation. Of course, you can find some causes like in the case of congenital dyserythropoietic anemia is one such cause or sometimes there is entity called refractory megaloblastic anemia where you don't know what exactly is happening. Okay? So, these are the broad category of uh, megaloblastic macrocytosis like the most common one remember folate or cobalamin deficiency. Now, coming to the non-megaloblastic uh, macrocytosis causes, it can be because of alcoholism, liver diseases, hypothyroidism, cases of splenectomy and then sometimes even in chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases could be seen in myelodysplasia or even drugs. These are the causes of non-megaloblastic type of macrocytosis. Sometimes there can be uh, something called pseudomacrocytosis. Now, what is this? This is a condition where there is elevation of MCB, that is mean corpuscular volume is more than 100 femtoliters, but the RBCs are not enlarged. Okay, And that's why it is called pseudomacrocytosis. Now, in what conditions you see this pseudomacrocytosis? It can be seen in conditions where you have cold agglutinin disease, 
Okay, that's a type of hemolytic anemia where the RBCs are clumped together and then the instrument, the analyzer reads the clumped RBCs as single RBC. And that's why there is increased mean corpuscular volume. Sometimes in cases of severe leukocytosis and in cases of severe hyperglycemia, there can be interference in the you know, estimation of mean corpuscular volume and can show increased elevation of mean corpuscular volume. But the RBC size are normal and they are not enlarged. That's why they are called pseudomacrocytosis, right? Now, let's look into the mechanism of megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic macrocytosis. Remember, I'm not going to talk about each entity in detail. I'll be discussing these entities in a separate tutorial. But then as of now, let us understand some basic concepts of why there will be megaloblastic macrocytosis and causes of non-megaloblastic macrocytosis. First one, megaloblastic macrocytes. I told you there will be impairment of DNA synthesis and this is most commonly seen in cobalamin or folate deficiency. Right? Remember, these are the vitamins. They are very crucial for providing the necessary building blocks for DNA replication and division like thymidine and purines. Okay? So, if these vitamins are deficient, what really happens is that hampers the normal maturation of red blood cells. Okay, because there is no proper, you uh, know, uh, building blocks for the DNA synthesis, which hampers normal maturation of red blood cells. And then finally, what it leads to is formation of enlarged and functionally impaired erythroid precursors. Remember, it is enlarged precursor and that's why this is called megaloblast. Okay. And finally, that leads to anemia. Now, you need to know the difference between a normoblast and a megaloblast here. Okay. Normobl if you compare the normoblast and megaloblast, obviously, you can see that there is increase in the size of the erythroid precursor. And that's why it is called megalo because it's bigger. Megaloblast. Okay. Cytoplasm is more abundant than that of a normoblast. Right. And the nucleus, there because of impairment of DNA synthesis, the nuclear maturation lags behind. And that's why the chromatin is very characteristic. It's called sieve chromatin. Okay, remember, large cell, large erythroid precursor, sieve-like nuclear chromatin, and then you have abundant bluish cytoplasm. That's how a megaloblast looks like. That's about, uh, you know, in brief about mechanism of megaloblastic macrocytes. Now, let us look into the non-megaloblastic macrocytes where there is no impairment of DNA synthesis yet the RBCs are larger in size. Why is that so? Let us look into liver diseases and alcoholism. What really happens here is that there will be impairment of lipid metabolism and alterations in the cell membrane composition and that's how the RBC cells are larger and they are more fragile. Okay, That leads to increase in the mean corpuscular volume. Second one is hypothyroidism, where there will be very mild macrocytosis compared to other macrocytosis. Very minimal I mean, uh, elevation of mean corpuscular volume. So, what is the mechanism? Again, it's multifactorial. It can affect lipid metabolism. It can disrupt the usual process of erythrocyte maturation. And that's how there is increase in the size of RBCs. The third one, splenectomy. Why? Normally, spleen is protective in function, right? Because it filters the you know older RBCs. When you when you have no spleen, and that filtering role is lost, and that's why you know you have more older and larger RBC population, and that contributes to macrocytosis. Remember what is macrocytosis? Increase in size as well as elevation of main corpuscular volume. Now. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, what could be the cause of elevate, elevation of MCV and larger RBCs? Multifactorial again, it can include chronic hypoxia. It could be because of the side effects of the medication taken for COPDs or could be because of the physiological adaptations associated with the disease. Okay, the RBCs becomes larger because of hypoxia. Right? It is also attributed to excess cell water, secondary to carbon dioxide detergent. As I said, the factors associated with COPD is multifactorial and you know there is no single cause for macrocytosis in COPDs. So, what is the morphology as I told? The RBCs are larger inside. You can find variable degree of uh, variation in size and shape. That's anisopoikilocytosis. Most of the RBCs are larger. 
depending upon what type of macrocytes you are looking at it can be round macrocytes or oval macrocytes now i will let i will explain these things in detail a bit later as of now remember the rbc size rbcs are larger in size look at this this is a small lymphocyte in comparison you can see most of the rbcs are larger you can see that variation in size and shape of the rbcs majority are larger rbcs some are round some are oval and that's an erythroid precursor that's a normoblast and look at this that's a neutrophil with more than five lobes normally the number of nuclear lobes is three to five if it is more than five you call it as hyper segmented neutrophil okay when you see a hyper segmented neutrophil along with uh, oval macrocytes remember you are looking at you should consider megaloblastic you know uh, anemia as one of the possibility okay so that is a clue for megaloblastic anemia what are the clues oval macrocytes and presence of hypersegmented neutrophils right now how do we approach a case of macrocytosis now we all know macrocytosis is basically mean corpuscular volume more than 100 femtoliters right now then you subject the patient you subject the patient for peripheral smear examination now in peripheral smear examination whether it is normal or abnormal you should look into right if it is abnormal whether they have megaloblastic features or whether they don't have any megaloblastic features i told you right what are the megaloblastic features they are oval macrocytes and the presence of hyper segmented neutrophil if you find these two in peripheral smear think that you're looking at megaloblastic you know features in the peripheral smear megaloblastic anemia you call only after you perform a bone marrow examination because megaloblast is not found in the peripheral smear it is a bone marrow finding what you know you can just suspect it is megaloblastic based on presence of these two features you know oval macrocytes and hypersegmented neutrophils now if you have a megaloblastic feature ask for a reticulocyte count why do you need that you should look whether the reticulocyte count is normal or elevated if it is less than two percent or more than two percent if it is more than two percent obviously you're looking at hemolysis okay and then there is hemolytic workup you should do for megaloblastic features that's pretty rare but then if it is less than two percent then you ask for vitamin b12 assay methyl malonic acid and homocysteine levels now if you get the investigation of these three you know um, biochemical uh, tests then you have three scenarios based on the vitamin b12 levels whether the vitamin b12 is low or it's borderline low it's not exactly low but then you have towards the lower limit of the normal okay it's borderline low or whether the vitamin b12 is normal then the other two tests plays a major role methyl malonic acid and homocysteine level now if the vitamin b12 levels are low and increased methyl malonic acid and either normal or increased homocysteine then you are sure that you are dealing with the case of vitamin b12 deficiency right now if the vitamin b12 levels are borderline low okay and methyl malonic acid is normal and then there is increase in homocysteine levels remember increase in homocysteine levels if you find increase in homocysteine levels with normal methyl malonic acid then you should suspect that this could be because of folic acid deficiency and not vitamin b12 deficiency right now if both methyl malonic acid and homocysteine levels are normal in spite of there is borderline vitamin b12 levels then you have to subject the patient for bone marrow study to look into other causes of megaloblastic macrocytosis right now the third scenario is normal vitamin b12 levels then you have to subject the patient for folic acid level estimation remember folic acid can be done either by serum folate levels or red cell folate levels it is said that the red cell folate levels are more specific if there is decrease in either serum folate levels or red cell folate levels then obviously you're looking at folic acid deficiency right now you have normal vitamin b12 level and you have normal serum red serum or red cell folate levels that means you are ruling out vitamin b12 deficiency 
you are ruling out folic acid deficiency, then you should look for other causes of megaloblastic macrocytosis. Then you do a bone marrow study. Now, let's come back to no megaloblastic features. Maybe you do a peripheral smear examination and then you don't see any megaloblastic features, yet you have macrocytosis. That is when you should think of other causes of macrocytosis. You have to consider performing liver function test, thyroid function test, careful clinical history again to rule out, you know, liver disorders, thyroid disorders or alcoholism or even exposure to certain drugs. So, this is how we approach a case of macrocytosis. So, that's all for today's session. We looked into various causes of macrocytosis. We looked into uh, basic mechanisms of megaloblastic and non-megaloblastic macrocytosis. We understood the morphological features of megaloblastic macrocytic and macrocytosis and then also brief note on how to approach a case of macrocytosis. Thank you for watching. If you have liked the video, hit the like button. Do comment. Don't forget to subscribe because I will be coming out with many such short interesting videos in pathology and do share if you find this video useful. Thank you.